We'll move on now to Greg Sheridan, who joins me now. Foreign editor, of course, at The Australian, but a columnist on many good things across the board. Greg, I want to get your take. Thank you for being on the program. I want to get your take on this big speech today from uh, Linda Burney. There's been two resets for the voice, uh, the Pro Voice campaign. Over the weekend, they've ditched the celebrities and, uh, you know, the big name activists. They're going grassroots, they say. And today they're giving the pretense of, of both limiting where the voice will be these four areas of health, education, housing and employment, uh, but we all know the voice can do whatever it likes if it's in the constitution, uh, but also the guise or the, the, the presentation at least today that she was putting out detail. What did you make of a contribution? Well, Peter, it's wonderful to be with you. I thought this was a very poor speech by Linda Burney today. Linda Burney's a nice woman. I, I'm sure she's motivated by a desire to uplift the state of Aborigines and so on, and that's a great thing. But this was a very poor performance. Uh, she simply refused to answer the question of how could you possibly limit the voice to four key areas or even suggest to them what their priorities will be. She just, just refused to answer those questions. But here's the other thing, Peter, that I really loved. This must have struck you. She made two great statements. First statement is, we on the Yes campaign are going to be positive, respectful, loving, kindly. And then the second statement is, all the no campaigners are Trump-like in their politics. They're a post-truth organisation. They're spreading falsehoods and lies, such as that having a racially chosen uh, special body in the Constitution somehow or other contradicts the idea of one vote, one value. So uh, this is the modern liberal mindset, you know, small L liberal mindset, that they, they will fight to the death for your right to agree with them. But if you disagree with them, you're a bad person and they're going to label you as a racist and a trumper and a, you know, post-truth and all the rest of it. Well, I just don't think you can sustain that kind of contradiction. Does the Trump slur that the left love to throw around, does that have any resonance in Australia? No, I think it has no resonance at all. It's just ridiculous. It has a resonance in, you know, um, Brunswick and Balmain, but... I mean, imagine going out to Blacktown or Mount Druitt and saying, you know, I want to tell you how terrible uh, Jacinta Price and Warren Mundine and Peter, uh, you know, the opposition leader are. They are Trumpers. Trump. Oh, I mean, it's just ridiculous. I mean, talk about a political class disappearing in its own cloud of mythology. Um, but also it's an mm. insulting and stupid thing. Look, I, I am going to vote no. I'm an opponent of The Voice. I've studied it hard. I've talked to everybody about it. I've talked to a lot of voice proponents. I believe, like Malcolm Turnbull judged in his first uh, judgment and wrote in his memoirs, that it does breach the principle of a colourblind, uh, racially neutral democracy of universal franchise. Does that make me a Trumper? Mm -hmm. That's just ridiculous. Does that make me a racist? I mean, this is, this is a grotesque level for the federal government to descend to and it claims that the no case is going to, um, you know, peddle division. But we have never been more divided over race in the last 50 years. And that is purely because of this determination to put race at the heart of our constitution when every liberal instinct is to eliminate race from our civic uh, arrangements. Uh, that That is my primary objection. I don't need any more detail than that. When, when that was um, put out there as the very sort of uh, early foundations of the voice that it would be then enshrining race in the Constitution, Greg, I, I had exactly the same thought. Um, I'm going to put to you a claim that she made today, Linda Burney, that having the support of the unions and business and, and the elites and sporting codes, she said, was a real measure of the voice's support, unlike the polls. Have a listen. The uh, fact that the business community, uh, the union movement, the sporting codes, uh, the faith groups, the civil society are uh, supporting this, I believe, is the real measure of the level of support out there in the community. I actually think this is what's working against it for them. She's not converting uh, the undecideds. If you look at the polls, they're actually turning out to be harder and harder no's. 
And as uh, Dennis Shanahan pointed out a couple of weeks ago here on Cridland that uh, quite a lot of the yeses are now soft yeses and moving over to the no cap. I think this is the problem for her and uh, not the salvation. Yeah, I think this is a very uh, dangerous moment for Australia because this is an attempt at kind of corporate democracy where you get your key elites and interest group representatives to tell the public what they must think. Now, electorates, democratic electorates, have a long tradition of rebelling against that. You know, I covered the Brexit campaign very closely and every woke and mm -hmm. beyond pensant and establishment figure in the whole of Britain, and they got Barack Obama as well, told the British people, don't you dare vote for Brexit. And then they voted for Brexit. This is very dangerous for the Yes campaign, but this is intensely undemocratic. This is intensely undemocratic. Nobody could suggest the ABC is being fair between the Yes and the No case. Yet here we have a matter where the government thinks one thing, the opposition thinks the reverse. The polls say that the society is divided 50-50. So you would expect that the No case and the Yes case would be equally funded and that they would get equal representation on the national broadcaster. You're not getting anything like that there is an element of, mm -hmm. you know, um, kind of communist politics about this where everybody has to think the same thing. And if you disagree, if you are an ideological deviationist, you're not just someone who disagrees, you're a bad person, you're a liar, you're a racist. And if the electorate is aware of this, they are quite likely to rebel and it would be a magnificent moment of Australian democracy. It wouldn't be a tragedy for reconciliation or any of the other balderdash. It wouldn't make us international pariahs. It would be a magnificent moment of democratic uh, deliberation if Australians voted no in spite of being instructed to vote yes by their betters and their, their overlords. Well, being instructed to think about anything in a particular way by your better and overlords, uh, that's to date just been something that uh, they want to shame you into doing. But this new bill that's uh, out as an exposure draft, soon to be uh, pushed through the parliament, or certainly the prime minister wants it brought on uh, by the end of the year. Uh, if you have something on your social media feed, it's either misinformation or disinformation. You could end up in jail. Half a million dollars is the scale of some of these fines. Uh, this, is, this is about uh, a criteria deemed harmful to minorities, harmful to the environment. That'll catch you in, uh, out. Uh, harmful to health, COVID and all the other stuff, which Ward's taken down, has now been proven right. You're a journal of many years standing, Greg. I mean, this is an absolute assault on free speech, isn't it? It sure is. And I hope all the media companies come together and uh, oppose this in principle. Every journalist should oppose this. This is a shocking assault on free speech. Uh, you know, a lot of people say things that um, I disagree with. A lot of people say things that I find a bit offensive. But why, I, I do believe there's a point where the internet has to come under the rule of law. And by that, I mean uh, mm -hmm. libel, mm -hmm. incitement to violence and so on. But these are at the extremes. Simply somebody saying, you know, I think the voice breaches the principle of democracy. If you, if you combine Linda Burney's speech today with that bill coming down the road, you can go to jail for having the conversation we've had tonight. That's absolutely crackers. And um, as you say, a lot of things that I thought were wrong at the time in COVID now turn out to be right. Mm -hmm. I mean, I thought mm -hmm. there was no substance Correct. to the proposition that the virus probably came from a Wuhan laboratory. Turns out I was wrong. Wouldn't be the first time. But how terrible if, if we weren't even allowed to have that discussion because a commissar for the truth determines what... And, you know, the most famous case, the high-tech uh, media, the social media companies censored the New York Post's brilliant story about Hunter Biden's laptop showing all of his criminality and so forth, and they said it was Russian disinformation. Turns out it was actually Hunter Biden's laptop, and that story, most Americans never heard of it because of an act of overt censorship facilitated by um, the FBI and security agencies in the service of the Biden administration. Now, that's a terrible road for democracy to go down. And, uh, 
you know, we all tend to like it when the people we don't agree with get censored, but it's a terrible, terrible road for a democracy. You're not wrong, Greg. I've written about this tomorrow in your paper. Thank you, as always, for your time.